In this tutorial, I'm going to show you all the Elementor button features. So if you want to add a button to your website, I'm going to show you what Elementor can do and the design features and things like that. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If it's your first time here and you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing because I'm always sharing new tricks, new WordPress tips, tricks, and hacks, and stuff to make your life easier using WordPress. So click the subscribe button, then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And if you like Elementor, you're gonna like this. I'm currently building the Ultimate Elementor course. It's gonna be a bargain. There's a link down below to get on the waiting list, so click on that link. Get on the waiting list and you get more details while you're on there. And check out our Facebook group where we chat WordPress, help each other get better at WordPress. Link in the description down below, join that free Facebook group. And with that out of the way, let's get into this Elementor tutorial. I'll see you in the screen capture. Adding a button to Elementor is as simple as dragging and dropping the button widget. And we're done, we have a button. You might wanna add a link to it, but maybe sometimes you don't wanna add a link. But if you do wanna add a link, you add it right here. And this link can go to wherever you want. It can go to WP Learning Lab, for example, because why wouldn't you link there? Why wouldn't you want to link to that website? So now we have a link in our button, and if someone clicks on it, it goes to that spot. We also have the option with Elementor 2.0 to add a dynamic link. We have a little dynamic button here, and that can link to any one of these options, including advanced custom fields, which is still in beta, but eventually it will be out of beta. Then you use advanced custom fields to link, which means you can have buttons inside of page templates, and then they automatically change based on dynamic content on that page, for example. The text, you can change right here. Right now it says click here, that's the default. Maybe we should have this say, sign up. And you can also make this dynamic based on these fields and advanced custom fields. And the most dynamic of these is advanced custom fields, which we'll cover in a different tutorial, but Suffice it to say, there's a lot of options for text in the link. And the link type, there's, or sorry, the button type, there's four different kinds, and really all they do is change the color. There's info, which is blue, success is green, warning is orange, and danger is red. And those are the button types. And you can manage these colors as well in the style, which we'll get to in just a second. There's the button alignment, left, center, right, and full width, which is the justified option button size, extra small through extra large, and you can add an icon if you want. So maybe want a little dress book icon. I want to center the button. I want to put the icon after the text, and I want to add a little more spacing so they're not so close together. There, right, now we have a nice little button going on here. Even a little hover effect, you notice when I hover over it gets a little bit lighter, and we can change that some more under style. Now inside style, we have a normal tab and a hover tab. The normal tab is what we see right now without the mouse hovering over the button. So we can change the text color. Let's just change it to light blue. We can change the button color. Let's make it, that's hard to read, also hard to read. Uh, let's find something that's not so hard to read. That's not so bad. Now we change the the, but the text color and the button color. We can add a border if we want, solid, double dotted, dash, grooved. I recommend you just go through these, just click on these and see what happens. You have to add a width before they actually show up. So just, let's just add a width of eight. And you can see there's a double line which takes the same color as the text color. Uh, let's add a dotted border. We dot a border now on the button. And then we can add a border radius to the button which basically makes the border rounded. So if you wanted, instead of the box shape, a pill shape, you have to add a large radius. So the higher the radius we have here, you'll notice the more rounded the corners become. So let's just make this 100. Now we have more of a pill shaped button. And the box shadow is a box or a shadow that appears behind the button. And there's some default settings, which are fine, but you have to add a spread for it to actually show up, which is the distance away from the button that it is. If you don't want to add a spread, you need to adjust the horizontal. Let me put this back to zero. Adjust the horizontal and vertical options. And that's shifting it away from the button 
by however many pixels you set here. So horizontal, of course, shifts it horizontally, and vertical shifts it vertically. And blur makes it either more blurry or very crisp. And position, outline is outside of the button, inset is inside of the button. So you can barely see it with these colors, but the shadow is now inside the button. Let's see if I can change the color of the shadow. Now we can see it better. Now the shadow is inside of the button, and this is a terrible looking button after all these options I put on here. But we're going to go with it, and we're going to now change the hover effects. So for the hover text color, whatever color you choose here is going to be the text color when someone hovers. And I'm going to make it red. Now we see if we hover, the text color, the icon color, and the border color go to red. Let's change the background color to black. Let's see how that looks. Not great because we have that inset shadow. We'll change that in just a minute. Border color. Let's make it yellow. Now we're getting to somewhere beautiful. Uh, hover animation. So this happens to the button if you hover over it. And there's eight different options, or nine, as of this recording. And if you hover over, you set one of those, you hover over it, you see the animation happening. And this button is becoming worse and worse. That's okay. So border type for the hover. No, sorry, that's the border type for, for overall. Let's keep the border, because I, I love that border. So we are able to change everything above this separator for the hover. So that's where the normal and hover things change. And below that, all these options stay as they are, whether it's hovered or not. Except for maybe the box shadow. Let me see. No, it looks like the box shadow changes as well. So it's everything above this divider, this dark gray line. Everything above that changes on hover or normal and everything below that is just a constant for the button and then beyond that we have our advanced options which are pretty much the same for all elementor modules you can add margin above and below you can add padding which goes between the button text and the outside of the button the z index is when you have multiple layers or multiple elements stacked this determines what level it appears on so if you want the button to appear at the very top of the stack you have to have a higher z index Entrance animation, this is when the page loads. It can be animated. There's quite a number of them. You can add a CSS ID and CSS classes for more CSS styling. Of course, there's background options, and again, there's the hover and normal. And then there's borders, more borders, and responsiveness. So you can choose to display or hide the button on various devices just by checking these boxes, show or hide. And then you have custom CSS, and custom CSS, I believe, is an Elementor Pro option you don't get this option on regular maybe some of these others as well I'm not entirely sure but css for sure is a pro option and that's all there is to adding buttons i recommend you make buttons that look prettier than mine because nobody will want to click this button they'll probably just run screaming from the page if they see a button like this so that's how it works i hope this video helps you if you haven't done so yet get on the elementor waiting list get on the facebook page and hit subscribe so you don't miss anything, click the bell icon. And next up is clicking one of the videos on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.